Hello. How's health class going this semester? Eh, good, I guess. Something not right? Well, it seems that after today, I'm going to have to change the topic in health class. Why? What's up? You know, Susan, she was really upset because Tyler, that boy who sits across from her, wrote on her arm with a pencil. Susan got all upset and was convinced she'd get brain damage from the pencil markings. Nothing new for Tyler. He's trouble. I know in my class, I need to keep an eye on him. There's been a lot of talk on the news lately about toy recalls and lead paint. Susan must have heard some of the news warnings. And now, with the pencil at her arm, she must have freaked out. Right, so I explained to the class that lead in pencils is not the same thing as lead in paint, and that we'll talk about it in more detail to clear up the confusion, since lead poisoning is a serious topic. So at this point, it's a priority to talk about it in class. Good idea. You remember when I bought my house? It needed painting. So I hired a painter, and he told me that there was a lead paint problem and that it couldn't just paint it, but instead, it first required that the old paint be specially removed, whether it's indoors or outdoors. Old paint chips fall off, and babies or toddlers who tend to put things in their mouths could eat those chips or dust with lead in it. If that happens, the child could get sick. So, that's serious, and it turns out that it's a problem of millions of households all across the U.S. So the guy put on protective clothing and a mask and carefully removed the lead paint from the house and cleaned the whole work area around my house. Well, that was the cause of all those toy recalls, right? The worry was that while playing with these toys that have lead paint on them, kids might be putting them in their mouths. Yeah, but it's not just, you know, only toys or things that are painted. There's other items, too. I know that there are some jewelry that's made of lead. And also, uh, you know, plastic items that have lead. Not only that, lunch boxes contain lead. Mm, are you two discussing lead? Yep. Oh. When I was pregnant, right before my son was born, we had the water in our home tested to make sure it was safe from lead. It turned out that our water had lead. I was shocked. It seems that the solder on the joints that held our pipes together contained lead. The lead then got into our water, our drinking water. Wow. It's really dangerous. So, we had to replace many of our water pipes. Huh, <sighs> imagine that. Wow. The inspector also explained lots of other places where lead might be found. He talked about homemade medicines, cosmetics, and hobby materials such as stained glass windows, which can also contain lead. What else did he talk about? Oh, old car batteries. And when renovating old houses, you can find lead in the paint and in the pipes. There are many different things that have lead. It was really interesting. I decided to do some internet research. There's really fascinating stuff on the web. For instance, some cultures in other countries, people make their own medicines, cosmetics, and things. And those can have dangerous levels of lead in them, too. Wow. It seems there are many ways to be exposed to lead. But the most common is through lead paint. So, Amanda, getting back to your situation, before they replaced your pipes and the joints to get rid of the lead, how come you and your husband didn't get sick? Well, the lead level in the water at my home wasn't dangerous to adults. However, if children were to drink it, especially children under the age of six years, it would have been very dangerous. Any amount of lead can be dangerous for children. 
For example, even if it was just a small amount of lead, it could lead to learning disabilities or other types of problems. If a child ingested high levels of lead, it could cause seizures, coma, or even death. So, when this came up in health class, there were a lot of concerns, but it turns out there were several misunderstandings. We have cleared them up. I used the CDC website, you know, the Centers for Disease Control. There's a lot of information on there about many different public health topics. Mm, neat. So, does lead poisoning affect the brain? Well, according to the CDC website, various organs in your body, such as your heart, liver, kidneys, can be affected. But you wouldn't necessarily notice it. Someone could have been repeatedly exposed to lead and wouldn't even know it. The CDC recommends that those who suspect they may have lead poisoning, or any reason to be suspicious of possible exposure, should request a blood test. If there's risk for lead poisoning, children should be tested at the age of one year, two years, and again between three to six years, just to be certain that there's been no exposure. I thought that a child was at risk at any age. So then, well, who is at risk? Right. But especially in areas where there are a lot of old houses that might have old lead paint on the inside or the outside. Nowadays, house paint in the United States is not allowed to have lead in it. Mm hmm Unfortunately, it's the case that African-American children are two times more likely to be at risk for lead poisoning than Caucasian children. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, unfortunate. Wow. So if a kid does have high levels of lead in their blood, what can be done to cure it? Well, in that case, they should be seen by a doctor or professional. They will be able to test the blood levels and then decide what needs to be done. In the event that high levels of lead are found, they will need treatment or a change in eating habits. But still, they need to figure out where the lead exposure is coming from, as something has to be done to stop it. This all needs to be done because our children are precious. Right. So what adults should do if they have a home that was built before 1978 and they have their own children or children who visit is they should call the health department and discuss having their home tested for lead in the water or in the paint or pipes, etc. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in planning the topic of lead poisoning with your health class tomorrow, what are you going to tell them? Well, the same kind of things we've been talking about. And I'll encourage them to inform their parents about the CDC website and to urge them to look up information about lead poisoning. I learned a lot of new information from there as well, such as you shouldn't use hot water from the tap to make baby formula. Instead, you should use cold water because hot water contains higher lead levels than cold water. That's just one new thing that I learned. So, if you live in an old house, I want you to be aware that many old houses were painted with lead-based paint to protect yourself and prevent exposure to lead and lead poisoning. Here's what you should do. Damp mop floors. First, place soap and water in the bucket, then use a mop to wash all the floors. Be sure to clean thoroughly, even in the corner. Next, damp wipe walls and window sills. Second, with a wet rag, wash all of the walls. Try not to miss a spot. Then, wash the window sills and all of the trim all around the window. It's very important to clean around the entire window. Wash children's hands. Third, Kids often play with toys and may touch the walls and such. 
you must encourage them to wash their hands frequently after each activity. Encourage hand washing, and if they touch the walls again, have them wash again. Wash young children's pacifiers and toys. Fourth, wash the toys that children play with. As for babies, when they drop their pacifier on the floor, don't just place it back in the child's mouth after wiping it. Wash it thoroughly so that nothing is stuck on it. Next slide, please. Good. Use cold water for drinking and cooking. When you're cooking food or drinking water, be sure when using the tap to use cold water. You don't want to use the hot water, only the cold. If you're drinking water, use the cold water tap. And if cooking with it, use cold water and boil it. Next, keep recalled products away from children. Next, for toys and any other items you have for children, it's important to watch for news, internet, or mail notifications for information about recalls. These recalls will tell you if the product has a problem and needs to be discarded or other instructions will be provided by the manufacturer. It's important to follow those instructions very carefully. Get your home tested before scraping and repainting. If your house is being remodeled or repainted and old paint will be scraped or removed, before the project starts you should remind your parents to get the paint tested for lead. Then, once the results come back, if everything's okay, go ahead. But encourage your parents to have those tests done. You can ask the doctor to test children for lead levels. You can ask your doctor about blood tests for lead levels to assess where the lead levels are, low, high, or somewhere in between. Then you can discuss the test results with your doctor. Any questions? We done? Great. Class dismissed.